everyone, Kristen Lustig here. I'm gonna go over some basics with you today, um, just to clear up any confusion for you, and just to give you, if you're just starting, you're just a beginner, you haven't bought anything yet, to give you an idea of what to buy, and then how to mix your paints, to get the most bang for your buck. Sorry, I got a little distracted there, my dogs are barking. Um, anyhow, so I'm gonna show you how to mix paints, and I'm going to show you the different type of canvases there are to buy. Um, I'm going to show you um, what you need to mix your paints, what the additives are, and what basic paints to buy. Because there's, you know, if you, you don't need to buy a whole lot of paint to get started. So, um, yes, this is my lovely splint on my thumb. Because from stirring those 48 bottles of paint that I filled... My thumb now is bothering me. I think I have some tendonitis or something in it. Uh, anyhow, so let's get started. I'm going to put you guys down here. And this is my studio, by the way. You can see a few of my pieces on the wall there. I keep, I hang them up there to dry. That way I don't have to worry about uh, stacking them up. And I usually write on the back of them what the dates are so that I know how long they've been curing. I'm not always real good at that, but I try. Okay, so let's get you in here. Okay, I think I need to move. All right. So let's see. First things first, I'm going to talk about paint. I recommend that you buy the Wherever you're at, if it's Michael's, it's Artist Loft. Uh, I think it's Creative Inspirations at Hobby Lobby. I'm not sure about Joann's, but just get the basic. Um, it says number one on them. And I recommend getting two paint because you're going to get more bang for your buck out of the two paint. I know that the, uh, the craft paints look like a good deal because they're only a dollar or 80 cents a bottle but you're really not getting a lot of pigment out of those paints because they're already watered down. Uh, so I recommend the tube paint and I recommend if you're just beginning to get red, a red, a yellow, a blue, just your primary colors, and then get a black and a white. From those primary colors, you can mix just about any color you want. Um, you can get a color chart or a color wheel to help you with your color mixing. But like I said, if you're just starting out, just get those three colors and try it with those three primary colors first. Uh, that's going to be your best bet. And I think they run um, on sale. You can get them for about $2 a tube, the Artist Loft. So that's a pretty good deal. And uh, they do have the big bottles of the Flow acrylic. And uh, those are good for your black and white because, again, you get more for your money. Um, you don't have to go that big to begin with, though, if you're not sure if this is something you're going to want to continue. Uh, yeah, I would just stick with this, this, just getting the tube paint to start with. Okay, so first we're going to talk about with the uh, mixing the paint. I did a video last week and I forgot a whole bunch of stuff, so I decided to go ahead and make it again this week. I uh, I need to fill up my bottles. These are the bottles that I use. I get them from Sam's Club. Um, I ordered them online because they don't always have them in the store and if you're getting a large quantity. They're really nice bottles. Uh, some people have said they have had trouble getting the the lids to stay on. I have not had that problem. So I think you just have to make sure that they're really down and, you know, screwed on tight. I use the pencil erasers that you buy just at Walmart, anywhere you can get them. And they stick on there really nice and tight. And they're, uh, I can color coordinate all my bottles, or most of them. So it's because they usually have a, them in a variety pack. And I think I paid 58 cents for the package at Walmart. So really cheap. And the bottles, um, let me see. They weren't expensive, but I can't really remember off the top of my head what I paid for them. I bought them by the, they come by the dozen. Um, so 
pretty inexpensive too, but this is not basic stuff. This is if you're gonna pour, you wanna get these bottles to keep your paint in because it's nice just to be able to go and grab a bottle. But for basic stuff, just mixing in cups and using your cups um, is you know where you wanna start. These are nine ounce cups, I believe. I got these at Sam's Club again. And they're good for, I'm not gonna mix up a whole lot of paint today because I just wanna refill my bottles. And these are 12 ounce bottles and they're probably about halfway empty. So I'm not gonna mix up a whole lot of paint, but my formula is the same whether I'm mixing a little bit or a lot, okay? So I have a kitchen scale. Uh, if you don't have a kitchen scale, it's not a big deal. You just have to eyeball it. It's gonna be equal parts of your paint and your Elmer's glue all. Um, I've, I've heard different people on this. Some say you can use the regular glue. I use for my formula the glue all because it has more in it than the regular school glue. Uh, more conditioners for your paints and it acts more of a, a pouring medium or a PVA. So uh, this is what I use for my formula. So I mix uh, one to one ratio. So what I do with my kitchen scale, if you have one at home, they're great because you can just turn them on. Uh, when you've got zero, zero, which is, I have it set on uh, ounces. You can do grams too, but I, I do the ounces. So your cup is always gonna weigh something. So once you put your cup on there, uh, clear it out again, just hit, by hitting that right side button. The right side button again will clear it out to zero. So then you're starting from scratch, okay? First thing I put in is the paint because I need to know how much paint I have before I add the glue all to it. And I'm not gonna have a, a whole lot in here, but I don't, oh, that was good. I don't need a whole lot. Let's see if I can get some in the cup this time. That was my key from work. I'm a hairdresser, so that's what we use at work to squeeze out the, the tube color that we use for hair, hair coloring. Okay. It kind of helps to get every, every last drop out of the tube. I'm trying not to get paint on this splint, but I can see that's probably not going to work. I'm going to take it off. Excuse me, just a minute. Okay. I should be wearing it because the squeezing to these two paints is hard on my thumbs, but let's get all the paint out we can get. Okay. And I only got... 0.7 ounces out of that. Point 0.7, okay? So again, I'm gonna clear it out again by hitting that right button. Uh-oh, there we go. I don't know why it went blurry there for a minute. Okay, so I cleared it out. Now I have double zeros again. So then I'm gonna take my Elmer's glue all and I'm gonna put in 0.7. This is where the scale comes in handy because if you're eyeballing that, that's that's not a lot of paint to eyeball, but you could do it. You, you're just gonna pour the equal amount in there and it doesn't uh, hurt anything if you get more or less. Just try to keep it around that, around that amount. Okay, so there's my 0.7. Okay, so 0.7 and 0.7 is gonna be 1.4 ounces. So I'm gonna clear that out again. And then this is the Floetrol, and this is your paint extender. So you've got your, your glue wall, which is your paint medium, uh, your pouring medium, sorry and you want to mix that together. 
And you can see my ugly sticks. These are sticks I bought at uh, Walmart, again, for 97 cents for the, the package, I think. Well, maybe they were a little bit more. I don't remember. But I, I wipe them off when I'm done and then reuse them. So as you can see, I reuse these a lot. I think I'm still working on my first package of sticks. So it is good to recycle things, too. It definitely saves you money. Good, better for the environment. Okay, mix that up good. The Elmer's glue all is going to be on the thick side, so this is going to thin your paint down, your tube paint, a little bit, uh, but it's still going to be pretty thick. Okay, so we're going to clear this out again, the clear button, and then my Floetrol, I use a sieve or a strainer to strain my Floetrol. I don't strain the glue. I've never really had a problem with the glue being weird, but Floetrol for some reason has a lot of boogers in it. So, and I take it from the, I have a gallon of it, but I, I prefer to use this bottle when I'm pouring through the sieve and into the cup. It just makes it nicer. And if you're just starting out, you can get this small bottle at uh, Home Depot or Lowe's. I, it was six or seven dollars, I think. So uh, the the gallon is thirteen. So you're gonna it's a better deal to get the gallon. But if you're not sure, you're gonna continue, of course. Again, basics. So you can get the smaller bottle, and you can get the smaller bottle of the glue all too. That definitely comes smaller. All right. So I have my bowl of water over here um, that I keep for the sieve. So I just when I'm done, I just set it in the water. And that way it always keeps it clean. All right, take some of the water out. And then I just hold my sieve over my cup and then pour in the flow trail. And we're we wanting to go to 1.4. Because we had we had 0.7 of flow or paint and 0.7 of glue all. So that would be 1.4 ounces of Floetrol. You're going to double it. Three, almost to four. There we go. So that's four. I like this formula because it's exact. Um, and when you're starting out, there's lots of questions about consistency and what is uh, a good formula and what should I use. And for me, this is just easy. There are a ton of other additives you can use. Um, but this one works really well for me. I get really good cell action from it. And um, it's... Just, it gives it a good a good consistency. I like my paints a little bit thicker on the thicker side because I pour a lot of uh, trivets and coasters. And on the ceramic tiles, they're slippery. The paint is slippery. So if you mix it too thin, it's just going to all, your design is going to all run off the tile. So you want to make sure that you have a little bit thicker consistency if you're going to do that kind of work. So that is it. I don't feel like I need to add any water to this. Uh, what I do if I want to add water, if I feel like it's too, uh, every tube paint even is different, a little bit different. If I still feel like it's too thick or I want to thin it down for something else, I use the mixture of 90% water and 10% Floetrol. And I just put it in a, you know, water bottle that I have sitting around. And I marked there, that was about, filled it up to there with the Floetrol and then the rest of the way up with water. So if you want to thin these down, this is what I use. And I use this because uh, it, it still has some paint conditioners in it and binders. So you're, when you're thinning down, you're not just thinning down with water. Um, so that's a good, a good mix to have. All right, um, I'm gonna do one more for you because I need to mix up, mix up some that yellow on that. I'm a little bit like Christina Welch. I get crazy when things are messy. Not too crazy, but 
a little crazy. Okay, uh, I'm gonna mix up one more for you, just so you can get the idea. I'm gonna do the light blue, Artist Loft light blue. That was Naples yellow, by the way. One of my favorite yellows because it's it's still bright, but it's a calm yellow. It's not a. It doesn't take thing over things. Yellow has a tendency to do that. Okay, so let's clear it out again. I'm gonna put my cup on, clear out the cup. So I'm back to zero. I put in my paint. I have about a, I need about a half a bottle. So I need about six ounces total. So let's see how much blue we can get out of here. I'm thinking I'm gonna try and get it up to two ounces. Maybe. Maybe not. Yeah, I'm at 1.3 right now. So let's take off the lid. Okay, I'm at about 1.5. 1.5, 1.6. So, going to put in Elmer's glue all as my pouring medium. I'm gonna equal parts. So I've got 1.5. So I'm gonna clear that out, and I'm gonna do 1.5 of the glue all. I keep an eye on my scale. When it starts to get close, especially with the glue all because it's thicker, I uh, pull back on the stream a little bit. Four, five, there we go. Okay. Mix that up. I like the clear, semi-clear cups because you can kind of see on the sides there, you see where it's still got white. I don't make yourselves crazy trying to get it all in there, but it just gives you an idea that, you know, where you're at as far as getting the product mixed in. This is why my thumbs are so sore <laughs> All it's mixing. Okay, so we've got that mixed up, and we're going to clear it out again. I'm going to get my sieve out, rinse it out, get my float troll. Okay, we're cleared out, so, okay, wait a minute. So we had 1.5 and 1.5 makes three ounces. So we're gonna go, now we want six ounces because you double that. So there was 1.5, 1.5 makes three and then double it to six. So we're putting three ounces in here. Of float troll. Okay. And so you see how your tube paint gets you a lot of mileage because you we put in that we only put 1.5 ounces of paint. Uh, those tubes are four ounce tubes, yeah, 4.6.06 tubes. So four ounces of paint um, doubled with your glue all. That would be eight ounces of paint. And then you're gonna add eight ounces of paint. So you're gonna get 16 ounces out of a four ounce tube of Flow Acrylic. So really good economically. And you've only paid $2 for that tube of paint, hopefully, if you got it on sale. I don't think they're much more than that if you don't get them on sale, but I always look for the sales. 
Wait until they're on sale. Go grab them. Or use your coupons. Okay. That looks good. It's stripping into the cup. It's making a little bit of a mound, but then the mound disappears right away. So that's what I like to see. If you're pouring something where you want a thinner paint, um, you, you definitely don't want a mound. You want to for the stream to just be flowing into the cup. But mine are, that's what I like, is a little bit thicker. And then I pour it into the bottles, and then if I want to add, I don't add silicone to my bottles. Um, because I like bigger cells, and if you put it in the bottles and you shake it up a lot over and over and over, uh, your cells are going to, or your silicone is going to get smaller and smaller, so it's going to make smaller cells. And I like chunkier um, cells myself. So I just, if I'm going to do a pour, and a lot of times I don't want silicone at all. Uh, the ring pours, the uh, the strainer pours that I do, those I don't like to have silicone in because I like the lines to be really crisp. So um, if you put silicone in, they tend to get bubbly looking. Um, it, but if I want to do something with silicone, then I just pour from my bottle into a cup and then add my two or three drops of silicone. And this is the silicone I use. It's acrylic pouring oil. Uh, you can get this on Amazon. It's uh, really good. I've, I've gotten a lot of really good results with it, and it doesn't take a whole lot. Um, so there is your mixing. Uh, like I said, if you want to thin them out, use your 90% water and 10% Floetrol to thin them out. And I will pour those in there later. I'm trying to remember if that's what I, all I wanted to tell you about mixing. Uh, if you get your red, blue, and yellow, then you can make... Um, just about any color from those. Your your red and yellow make orange. Your blue and red make purple. Your blue and yellow make your green. So those are, you have everything you need there. And then you can go from there. You can make pink and just add a little bit of white and add pink uh, or half pink. So world of colors just from three tubes of paint. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, so you, you need your stir sticks, you need your cups. Now canvases, a lot of people have been asking about canvas and what is the difference in canvas. I recommend that if you're purely going to be practicing, that you start out with the staple back canvas. And this is a staple back. It's very basic. It has, uh, the corners are, are lifted. Uh, you can sell these, but I don't recommend that you do. If you're if you're getting good and you're getting people requesting you buy to buy paintings, um, these are good for practice, solely for practice. So the next one up from that is a number two. That's a number one, or those are the ones you get in the value packs. And the reason that I tend to shy away from the value pack stuff. Like I said, they're good for practice, but the problem is if you pour something really beautiful on a practice, then you can sell it, but professionally it's not, it's kind of frowned upon. So if you're going to be selling stuff, you really need to step up to the second level. And these are not, they don't cost as much um, as the thicker ones because they're the thinner ones, but especially the Michaels ones, they have a nice rounded corner on them, as you can see. And then the backs are just much more professional looking. They have the, uh, I didn't tape this one off, but they have the gasket in here. So your corners are, your extra material is tucked in to that. And everything's neat and tidy and more professional looking. So I just personally would, would buy the number twos. Again, get them on sale. Unless you're just a, Baby starting out, you've never done artwork before, you've never done a painting, go ahead and get the value pack ones, the staple back ones. Those are fine until you get better and you want to start selling your work. Then you need to step up to the to the number twos. Um, 
And I don't know that they, I think they're all numbered because I only buy at Michael's usually. So um, I think wherever you go, they're probably going to be numbered. So this one is a gallery wrap. Uh, it is a number three. These are more expensive. They are definitely professional quality. And the, the reason I like these is the sides that you get. Really cool effects on your sides because they're deep. So that is your, your number three. Again, it's uh, tucked. It's got a gasket in there and it's, and it's tucked in. You can see that. Okay, so those are your different types of canvas. And uh, hopefully that helps you when you're going to buy canvas. And again, if you're just starting out, you've never painted before, or you've done dabbled a little bit, go ahead and buy the value packs. If you can get them, maybe sometimes have them buy one, get one. Um, it's a good deal. And you're going to go through a lot of canvases. So um, that is about it, I think, as far as the basics goes. I think that would be, you know, paper towels and alcohol and um some of the other stuff that you probably already have around the house that you might need, uh, strainers. Um, trying to see if I have. Let's see. This is the strainer that I use for my for my strainer pours. Again, this one I get at Walmart. And it has, uh, it has holes up here in the top. And that's how you get your cool flower effects. And then holes in the bottom. So just some toys that you can buy. You can pick up pretty cheaply. I think that was $1.99. And it makes a really cool flower effect. This is one that I did a little bit ago, and it's got the color shift paint. The color shift paint is really cool. It's it's kind of pricey. It's three seventy seven a bottle at Michaels, and it's made by Folk Art, and it changes, as you can see. Uh, each color has its own shift that it changes to. This one is the pink, I believe, the pink color shift, and it changes to purple. So, but that was done with this strainer pour. I have a strainer pour video that you can go check out and see how I do those. But very cool effect from that. So hopefully um, I got your basic stuff out of the way. Um, oh, one other thing that you'll want to purchase. It's not a must, but in my opinion, I would not pour without it. And that is your torch. And it's a, uh, just a, like a creme brulee kitchen torch. And very easy to use. I got this one on Amazon. If you go through, um, if you watch Christina Welch at all, she has a link through her Amazon shop and Gina does too. And you can go in there and they have torches there that they use. And this is, I got this one on Christina's page. And that's a nice place to shop too because they have all their stuff that they use right there on Amazon for you to buy. So I think this was $12, and so not a big investment. Uh, you're looking at, you know, you could probably get everything you need um, to pour for roughly, I would say, to get started, probably about $50, not including your canvases. So maybe $100 to get you started. If somebody gives you a Michaels gift card, go, go get started and buy a few things. And you can always add as you go. But all right, everybody. Uh, hopefully that um, you guys learned something today. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave me messages and I will get back to you. I'll leave my email address on there also. You can message me there. Um, and I will put all of my recipes and everything in the, the message, the drop down message arrow. So you can see it in black and white too. So you can make your list to go to Michael's or wherever you go. 
Um, all right, please uh, subscribe if you haven't. I'm trying to reach my first 100 subscribers, and I think I have 43. So um, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like my video if you liked it and uh, share it. And that'll do it for this week. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.